is Paige Owens, the content director of Alternative Press, and today I am joined by the lovely Juliet Sims. Oh, Paige. <laughs> how are you? So how have you guys been holding up through the whole pandemic? I mean, it's, it's now over a month at this point. Yeah, we've been quarantined since um, March 14th or 15th. Mm-hmm. Wait, is that right? What's the date? I don't even know what. Is it? I think it's the. <laughs> is it the fifteenth? No, it's the sixteenth. It's the sixteenth. Oh my god! It's our anniversary today. I can't believe I just forgot that. I'm such a dick. dick. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, four years. <laughs> Woo! Um, we've been together for like ten though, so it feels right. like, uh, a lot longer. Um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be doing actually something for you guys um, after this. Earth. That's so ironic that that falls. I, off. I know when you guys sent that, I was like, "That's so perfect. That's so perfect." So we reach out for it. Yeah, um, but yeah, we've been quarantined now for uh, 31, 32 days, something like that. And um, you know, there's ups and downs. I'm not gonna lie. You you try to try to keep yourself busy. You try to focus on things that um, make you happy or take your mind off of things. For me, it, you know, I, I'm playing music for hours every day, listening to music. Podcasts are huge for me right now. <clears throat> Clean, you know, cleaning, making sure the place is organized. I feel like um, in, a, in a disorganized environment, you can tend to feel more crazy. So we try to like, you know, spend an hour and a half a day cleaning, making sure everything is nice. We exercise every day, we eat well. Um, you know, we wa we we uh, we like to watch things that make us happy. So like right now we um, we googled like the Marvel series in chronological order, not like when they were made, but yeah. how to watch them so they're in a chronological order. And so we just started that like three or four days ago, and we finished um, Iron Man three mm -hmm. last night writing. I mean, Fuck, man, just trying to trying to stay as productive as we can. Lots of FaceTimes with the family. It's very strange um, for me because we were we were running. Me, you know, my managers and my label, and we were like, shit, we're we're hitting the home stretch, um, finishing this record. Three or four songs will be done, and then this all of a sudden was just like, boom, go home. And so, <clears throat> just like all of a sudden, like holy shit, like it's that like a that fast of like that abrupt of a stop in your career can be um, dismantling it can make you feel um, unanchored so for me right now it's just like grabbing onto things that make sense and things that keep me feeling creative and um, sane I totally understand that it's 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 hard when you know you're you're being forced just to stay home you don't have a choice and there's nothing you can do about it. Everything's so out of out of control at this point. So yeah. you mentioned that you're you're playing music constantly. I was going to ask yeah. you how you're you know keeping yourself creatively stimulated. Is Andy at all like helping you to do that? Is he pushing you more now that you're home more? I mean, playing music is something. I mean, that's always been a part of my life and always a part of his life since we've been together and he would be the first one to tell you that if anybody pushes anybody to to practice vocally or or on writing or whatever it's me um i'm definitely the the one in the relationship that spends um hours a day you know doing vocal lessons singing playing guitar writing whatever it is um andy's very um the thing that I wish I had more of that he has is the ability to, he's uh, incredible at creating worlds and translating that world in a way that people can really understand and connect to it. I think that's such a gift that he has. He's like, he's a wordsmith. We all know that. And so, and, and the other thing that I, that he's really good at that I'm that I don't excel at is is actually interviews. When I was a teenager and into my adulthood, um, I was actually quite shy, and I didn't have um, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Most of my friends were were boys, and I had like maybe one or two girlfriends. Um, but I, 
uh, who were also huge dorks. <laughs> and I stayed in my room every day for hours and I would write and I would sing and that was my thing. And the thing that Andy's fucking so good at and I, I envy it so bad is his, his um, public uh, speaking skills and his, his ability to be super captivating in interviews and he's eloquent and intelligent. So that's something that I... Um, that I try to get him to like pass along to me constantly. Like I, I'll be like, okay, um, let's let's drill it. Ask me some questions and let's see how natural I can be while I'm answering them. <laughs> you know, so he's just like when it comes to that stuff, that's what I get him. I try to get him to help me uh, get better at just because I'm I'm a little awkward. And and you know, I, until I loosen up, but I, I'm awkward. I just am. I would have to say, I, I you know. I'm sure, you know, you obviously, you feel that way, but I'd have to t completely disagree with you. You're very easy to talk to and very personable and just very, it's, it doesn't feel like an interview. And that's one of the things I try to do also is like, I, I hate talking to people and I'm like, so, yeah. It's nice when it's just this casual, you know, conversation. That's, totally. That's the way it's got to be. Otherwise, you're not going to get the real, like, even with the interview, you're not, it's not going to be real. I feel like people won't connect with it. I feel like it'll feel, you know, very forced. And, um, yeah, I, I definitely when like, when I'm talking to somebody that's as easy to talk to as you are, I feel, um, l like it's okay to just be myself and... Right. Who cares if people judge how silly you are or whatever, you know? Julia, I just told you that I thought I peed myself in high school. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that uh, the the bar has been set. We <laughs> The bar has been set, and now I will leave the internet open to make fun of me. <laughs> I'm here. Let me make you feel better. I once crapped my pants before going on stage, so... <laughs> And I've peed myself on stage. Okay, so let's hear that story then. You brought it up. We gotta oh do it now. God. Okay, this is so, so embarrassing. Um, but look, I didn't have control over my system at the time because I was... Okay, so I was on Warped Tour 2015. And we were playing San Diego. I remember the city because my, I remember my dad and my sister being there and that was the, the city they were able to come to. And so they got to witness this. Uh, <laughs> I was very sick and so I was on um, <clears throat> vocal steroids. And if you've never taken vocal steroids before, they, um, they're not like, you know, working out steroids that you take to like get ripped and jacked and shit, but they, um, it's, it's, it's adrenaline. It's extreme adrenaline through your body. Um, it makes it so, you know, the, the strain that you're having on your vocal cords eases up and it, and it gives it ability and power. And that way you're not, you know, not unable to sing. And the downside of the, of taking cortisone is yes, you almost don't have, you don't have control over how intense your body is. So I'm on stage I'm singing, I'm wearing fishnet, I'm wearing like fishnet short, uh, uh, leggings, and then I have like shorts on, and, um, I'm standing at the mic, and I'm singing this, belting this really high, powerful note, and all of a sudden, I'm going, you're peeing. <laughs> and my, it was like slow motion, I was like, you're peeing everybody's gonna see I like slow motion down to pick up my warp tour water and I just dumped it on my head so that way nobody could see the pee you know what? Yeah, you could, like, coming out of my water. shorts and it like camouflaged it and people were like yeah dump your water on your head <laughs> And you were like, and no one will ever I'm, know. I'm mortified. I like drop to the ground, but I can't stop performing. I can't act like something's going on. So I just like grab the mic and jump it on my head and fall to the ground. And I'm like in my, I'm singing the words, but in my head, I'm going, holy shit. You just took a piss in front of like fucking a thousand people. <laughs> 
I got off stage and I, I, we went back behind the stage and I just sat down and started laughing so fucking hard. I couldn't, I, I was just crying, crying, laughing. And my band came back and they were like, what's going on? And I was like, I just peed on stage. <laughs> I had no control over my bladder because you, when you sing and you sing properly, you push from your diaphragm and how you push from your diaphragm is it's kind of like when you push to pee, that's, Mm -hmm. that's the proper technique. I go to push to hit that note. And unfortunately all my pee came out. (laughs) Think about it. And you're like, it is what it is. That was five years ago. Nobody saw it. And you got away with it for five years. it's like, look, hey, things could be fucking worse. And who was it? Was it Fergie? Where there's that like video on YouTube where you can see her peeing her pants. Like shit could be worse. There could be a video of me on YouTube like spraying pee pee out of my fishnet <laughs> stockings, but I covered it up. And no one will ever. It, I mean, now everyone will know, but no one then knew. So. <laughs> Good. That's the greatest. Good. Aside from obviously, like you guys are doing like the Marvel now, which it's so yeah. ironic because we actually just posted um, on our site. We were just posting like this is the chronological order of all of them up to Black Widow. So here's how you watch them. Oh my God. I, I'm gonna compare your guys's list to our list because we just Googled it. It just the first thing that popped up is what we've been using. We downloaded Disney, uh, the, the Disney app, just so we could watch the Marvel movies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'll end up watching other stuff, but it's the best. Yeah, Disney Plus, I, it, it's nice to feel like a kid, to be honest. Oh my gosh, it's the best. Are you kidding me? I was, I was telling Andy, um, two days ago when we were watching, um, Captain Marvel, and I told, I I stopped the movie, like, halfway through, and I was like, I just want to be a superhero. I I don't know what to say. I If I could choose anything to be in this entire world, it would be to be a, a, a fucking superhero. I just want to be a superhero so bad. I know. Wouldn't that just be so cool? So if you were going to be a superhero, what would your powers be? Captain Marvel's powers are pretty fantastic. Being able to fly, um, being able to shoot things out of your fists. <laughs> I would just want, yeah, I mean, I, I guess my super, I only get one? Yeah, so we actually had the same conversation in my house the other day. It was because we had just finished watching Umbrella Academy again. And like oh, all so of, good. So good. So good. My partner had never seen it. So we were yeah. watching it and he was like, he was really, he was really interested in it and really in, into it. And I was like, I was like, which one do you think I would be if I was any of them? He's like, oh, number seven. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, number seven. And I was like, all right, that's cool. Yeah, She's number seven's cool. dope. So then we started talking. It was like, you get one power. Okay. All right. So if I got, if I had one power, I think I would choose. Okay, so I think I would choose being able to move things with my mind because if I can move things with my mind, I can move my body. So I think if I was able to move things with my mind, I would also be able to fly. So I'm sneaking that one in there. Aside from Marvel, how else are you guys beating the boredom? Uh, I actually, uh, I started a TikTok. I uh, reluctantly, I actually enjoy it. I, I remember checking out checking the app out a couple years ago and it was a little bit different then than it is now. Um, I'm definitely like a big part of my personality is I'm just a goofball. I'm like through and through I just am very silly and I don't really take myself too seriously and I'm self deprivating and all of that. And I feel like TikTok is the perfect outlet to kind of show that side of my personality. So I've been getting kind of creative with that. Um, with Instagram, you know, I'm kind of <clears throat> trying to give people some distractions by posting, you know, acoustic songs and some, some serenading sessions and, um, you know, talking, talking to, to followers and stuff in my comments and trying to post engaging stories just to keep people, um, 
feeling like, you know, they're not alone and we're, we're all in this together and it's a very strange and weird time, but we're all going through it. I mean, I, I feel like this is the first time in the, in history where everybody in the world is going through the same thing. Not mm-hmm. now there's varying degrees. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot, there's people that are experience, experiencing, experiencing it, um, a lot more difficult than some of us are you know and so that is something that I definitely appreciate and um, have been doing my best to give back to you know um, Andy and I have uh, been raising we've been you know I I sell stuff on Depop and use that app to kind of you know get rid of stuff in the house one one person's trash is another person's treasure that whole thing and um, we've been able to raise some money for the CBC and some um, uh, you know, food banks and all of that. So that's been really lovely. But as I was saying, I totally sidetracked. (laughs) Um, you know, this is the first time in the history of anything that we've been, that people have been experiencing the same thing and we're all going through this together. And I think it's really important to, um, stay connected and let people know that I'm here. You know, I get it. This fucking sucks. Well, let's, let's do something silly. Whatever. <laughs> Laughing is the best medicine, I swear. I mean, it, this is already a serious enough time. It's already hard enough, you know, to put any more um, emotion or upset or seriousness on top of an already daunting, scary thing. Mm-hmm. You're just going to you're just going to worsen the situation. It's just going to become a dwindling spiral of depression and sadness. So you got to, you got to find things that make you happy, make you laugh, be just so unbelievably embarrassing and goofy. And, um, it, it makes it just that much easier to get through. It's nice to see you guys doing those things though, because it made me laugh. And I was like, Oh, they're like, enjoying time together and that that was like oh that makes me happy to see other people getting to like spend time with their loved ones and like enjoy that time and laugh and be goofy and act like kids that's exactly that's like I would say that would be if we had to pick one one thing to describe our 30 days so far is that we're just acting like kids and that's there is yeah. nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Especially you know, Andy and I. Yeah, we've been together for a long time, but we've also spent a lot of time apart just because of his touring schedule, and I've been on tour in a way. And we just, I mean, this is our first. I think this is either our first or our second anniversary that we've spent together. It might be our, there, we have, there's a lot of anniversaries. I think it might be our first wedding anniversary together. So, and he was actually supposed to be on tour during, during this one. Right. And so for us, we're like, well, that's, you know, the glass is half full scenario. We get to now spend the whole two months together. (laughs) You have to find the silver lining though. I mean, otherwise you are just sitting in your own misery that you've, you know, you haven't created that misery, but you're, you're just dwelling in it and that doesn't help. No. Yeah. The, the way, and for anybody who is experiencing misery or feeling sad about this or depressed, my best advice is just when get productive, even if it's on something small, even if it's like cleaning your, your pots and pans, scrubbing the toilet. I, I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> As long as I stay productive, and I'm not just watching TV, like, don't get me wrong, I love me some fucking TV, but there's a point to, you know, you there's a point you get to when you're watching so much TV that you just start to feel like your morale is low, and the way to get your morale up is to be productive, work on something. <laughs> Pick up, pick up an instrument you've always wanted to learn. Read a book that you've always wanted to read. Do you have the time now? Time is—it's like a gift. It's been given to you to be able to do the things 
you've always wanted to do. Mind you, that doesn't mean, like, I've always wanted to go skydiving. I'm not going to fucking go do that. But anything that can be done in your house, do it. Just do it. It feels like a couple days ago, but a couple weeks ago, you posted this video. It was like a red video on your Instagram, and you posted a clip, and you were like, I think I'm going to get in trouble for this. I'm yeah. assuming it's some unreleased music? It is. Um, that is a song off of my new record. <clears throat> I, I, it's just like, you know, three seconds. But yep. um, yeah, I don't have the okay to be showing any new music. I know it sounds weird, but like, you know, for, you, when you've got managers and a label and a producer and you, th these things, you, they roll out in a certain Upward. way. But mm -hmm. also, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, also it's like, whatever, we live in a day of age of sharing and getting people excited and, 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 um, you know, teasing and all of that. And so, um, yeah, I posted, it's just like a three second clip of me screaming essentially, which is something, and I wanted to post it cause it's like, Ooh, I've never done this before on a song. I want to show people. I was going to say, I... I wasn't, when I heard it, I was like, is that her? Did she do that? Yes. Because I've never heard you push your vocals in, in that type of a way. You have a, a very large vocal range. And you always have, since you were very young. And, you know, hearing that, I was like, oh my gosh. This is, like, very cool and interesting to hear come from her. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a lot of it's uh, it's not just one take. That's definitely tripled and quadrupled to get that thickness of a scream. But yeah, I mean, I know how to scream. I, I I've kind of always have. Um, I just it's just not really ever been a part of my my music. But this record is definitely heavier than um, anything that I've put out, and this particular song called for it it was a perfect moment and so it's, it's a cool moment and a song i really love or ice cream is there anything else on the new album that's going to be you know something that fans don't expect like that definitely there's uh there's one song in particular that um is is it's really heavy it's really heavy at the end and um um, I'm just grateful that I'm on a label that appreciates that kind of music. I've always been with record labels, uh, major labels. I've always been with re uh, major labels. I mean, besides when I was with Paper and Plastic, and they let me put out a an acoustic record. But um, you know, major major record labels aren't interested in rock music. Unless you're the you, Foo Fighters or um, Marilyn Manson or you know somebody that's already huge and established, they're mm -hmm. not really interested in rock music. It's all about um, hip hop and, and pop and all that. And that don't get me wrong, I I I love all of that, but it's just not the kind of music I make. And uh, yeah, being with Samarian, I've been they've kind of let me spread my wings, so to speak. So I'm really getting to put that on this on this record that's awesome because you know I you you've been doing this for so many years and it's gonna be really nice to see you in an element where you're able to um, to be your fullest freest artist yeah yes it's gonna be really nice. well thank you yeah I'm very excited this if the record has a, a culmination of um, heartfelt acoustic songs to uh, really heavy uh, guitar driven rock songs. We have one song that's probably one of my favorites on the on the album and it's it's like if you took Prince and like look, look I'm not gonna try to compare myself to Prince. Let's just start <laughs> let's just start there. There's no comparing myself I'm not saying but it's got it's got elements of like Prince and Marilyn Manson and like Aretha. That's incredible. Together. That's how I would describe this one song. It's one of my favorites. I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I saw that you had done those covers, the uh, Wild World and then One of Us. Why did you uh, pick those particular songs to do as covers for your, your socials? Wild World has been a song that's been in my life since I was a baby. Um, 
It's actually one of my dad's favorite songs. And <clears throat> I, I was born in California and I grew up basically on the beaches of San Diego. My dad and his brothers were surfers and we just, we were like beach bums. That lifestyle just goes hand in hand with music. Rock and roll, Rolling Stones, Beatles, Cat Stevens, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Led Zeppelin, you, you know, you name it. And that particular song, um, I just have such fond memories of my dad playing it and singing to us and us being on the beach or around a campfire. And it's just, it gives me a really warm nostalgic feeling. Plus, you know, it's very, it's really relevant to what mm -hmm. we're going through right, right now in these times. So I just felt like it was kind of like my soul was kind of screaming to just sing it and, and play it and learn it. And I felt like, fuck it, why sit and practice it? Just hit record, look at the site, read it. That's kind of what that video is. It's a little messy. I'm not, look, I'm not, I am not a video editor or direct. I'm not good at that shit. So it's just kind of artistic and just something I wanted to put together that was interesting and pretty and lovely at the same time. So I, I'm glad people um, liked it. Uh, and then the reason I did one of us was it was um, re it was suggested actually a few times when I asked people like what they'd like to hear next. Um, I saw that like four or five times and I've always loved that song um, ever since I was really little. So that's why I did that. I also chose one of us because um, it's also very relevant to what's going on. You know, think about it. If God was one of us, I think he'd understand what we're going through and how much help we need. And we did. I, yeah, and that's like kind of the point of my music my whole life is, and my art is like, what can you sing? What can you put out there that's going to um, connect with people, make them feel good and, and potentially inspire them or help them? And so that's, another reason I chose that song. Thank you so much, Julia. I really appreciate you taking the time to get on with us today. It was it was just great talking to you. You too, Paige. Thank you so much for, for having me and anytime. Please, let's do this whenever. <laughs>